top five. What do you got? Listen more. Listen more. Perfect. Listen more. Be Yep. Be positive. What was it, Jana, again? Figure out the pain before you even go to the present. That's the whole key. If you can remember that the rest of your life, you're going to go, man, I'm good at this. And then, and then once you find the pain, right, Leroy, you focus on it. Okay? I mean, really, that's all it is. You do the same thing on a listing, right? Because on a listing, the pain is i got to move really quick. We're going to list it, you know, right? The pain's there. But what you don't do on attraction is you, uh, I'm going to say this, I didn't say it before. You guys pretend they care why you came. <laughs> and my wife and I used to argue about this all the time. Because she'd go, well, you, when they ask you, because they are going to ask you, why did you come? I don't want you to answer it. Now, my wife and I used to have this argument. She goes, but they asked me, right? Her and Elizabeth. You know, they asked me. I have to, you know, it's right. They asked me why I moved. I have to tell them. I said, it's like saying, how's the weather? I'm just telling you it's a conversation starter. It, they really don't care why you joined. What they're doing is asking you, because here's what you're going to do. You're going to go, well, let me tell you why I joined. And you're going to tell them why you joined, and it's not their pain. Let me give you an example. If I want to join a country club, I say, you know, I'm thinking of joining the Austin Country Club. Why did you join the Austin Country Club? And you go, well, I joined the Austin Country Club because I'm a golfer. I love golf. Are you kidding? It's the best golf course. Oh my gosh, they have a tournament there every year, and we get free tickets. And you start talking about golf, and I go, None of me and my family play golf. Why are you talking about golf? And you go, well, that's, you asked me why I joined. What you should do is what? You got it. I'm telling you, when they ask you, why did you join, that's like saying, why did you join the country club? You go, well, let me ask you. What interests you in EXP? Why would you think of joining us? you turn it right around every time. Can you do that for me? Tell me yes. yes. Thank you. If you just do nothing but that, now my wife and I argue, because my wife is, again, Elizabeth and my wife are a lot alike. Um, when I say that, they're rules, they, they're rules followers, right? We yes. talked about that. They're rules followers. So guess, guess who at NASDAQ uh, stole the coffee cup? Jeannie. <laughs> because there's a NASDAQ coffee cup and, and I asked, I did ask, I wow. walked in and I asked, should I take a, can I buy a coffee cup? And they said, no, they're not for sale. And the woman said, nobody was in there. She said, if I was you, I would just take one. Don't ask, just do it. And then ask for forgiveness. No, they're not for sale and they're not for taking. And so Susan and I put our mugs back and who comes out of the building with a mug? There was three of us. I know, and you were all. <laughs> I wasn't the only one because guess, I'm sitting here, it's a $5 mug, and I'm going, I'm, I don't know about you guys, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and that thing's going in the coat, right? Now, she told me, but, but Elizabeth and Susan, again, if you're, yeah, if you're a ruler, if you're a rules follower, you go, wait, but Gene, you don't understand, they asked me. Just because they ask you doesn't mean you have to say anything. I've had this argument with people forever. Remember the country club example I gave you. Okay? Because I'm telling you, you guys do it every time. You do. Oh, well, let me tell you. Well, I can't wait to tell you why I joined. So what do you say to them when they ask you that? I said, well, why would you want, what, what are you thinking of? Well, you know, I'm, that's a great question. Now, you know what, I'll tell you later. Why are you thinking of joining EXP? I turn it right around every time. I can't even remember why I joined. When I say that, what, was the, what would the story be? You know, Elizabeth told me to check it out, and I went, geez, okay? What else, real quick, and then we'll let Sharon sit down. Ask for help. Ask for help, please, guys. Uh, this is a very special group today, because you guys came. You asked for help. You want to learn how to do this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. It's not a little thing. I don't take it lightly. 
That's why I stayed up almost all night thinking of what a, you know how I was going to present this. Bottom line is, you're asking for help now. Gene, show me how. Show me how to present it, right? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me why I joined, but you know what, golly, you know, why I joined three and a half years ago, I, you know what, I can't even remember. Why are you thinking of joining eXp? I turn it around every time. I'm really good. <laughs> and Susan and I, uh, Susan and Elizabeth were so funny, they're such role followers. You can't take that mug. <laughs> Boo boy, baby. <laughs> you know, you know, me and Brian Cohane and Rob Flick. You have to put this objection out there. Now, I'm presenting and uh, he asked, she asked, why did I join? And I turn that around and say, well, you scheduled this meeting with me. Okay? How would you respond to that? Well, well when she asks you why you joined, you go, that's a great question. Yeah, more importantly, why? why? Yeah, that's a great question. You know what? I will get to that. And I never get to it. <laughs> it's like when you go on a listing. Do you guys not know when, when somebody, you go on a listing, and the first question they ask you is what? How much are you going to charge? Right? And what do you do? You go, well, I'm going to charge. You don't do that. You, you instantly go, well, you know what? We're going to get to that. Let me show you my marketing first. Right? Same thing when they ask you, what's the commission split? You will get this from a lot of people on the phone. How much do you charge? Okay, I hear it all the time. Well, what do you guys charge? And I said, I'm confused. And they go, what do you mean? They go, well, how much do you charge? And I said, well, 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 because what are you asking? And they go, well, what's your expenses? And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa you, I'm sorry. We have got to meet in person because 90% of the stuff I'm going to show you is visual. And I don't know what you're talking about. And they go, well, how much do you charge? And I said, well, you got to understand. I, I really don't know what you're talking about. And they go, what's your split? And I said, oh my gosh, the split is just one part of our three-pronged thing. So if I just tell you what we charge or what it costs, you don't understand. I've got to talk to you about the, the shares. And the, you know, I, can't, I can't do it over the phone. I tell them I'm really bad. I've told you that on the phone. I li I, my script is I'm really bad on the phone. We need to meet in person or I need to get on a webinar with you or a Zoom call or whatever, because I got to show this stuff to you. Okay? I, don't, I, I, never, I never do 80-20 capping at 16. Never do it. It's almost like when you go buy a, a home, think about it guys, you're in real estate. Why do you, why do you not put the prices of homes in, in, on the flyers in the front of the house? Yeah, because when they, when they look at the flyer and they look at the flyer and they go, well this is a three bedroom, they don't notice that the study could be turned into a fourth bedroom. So they go, well, I'm not gonna look at this home. Or they look at the price, right? In other words, the reason I never put prices on any of that stuff is I want them to do what? Oh, Call me. It's a way to say no. Aren't there a lot of discount brokers out there right now? You know, $75 a transaction, unlimited. So when you go 80, 20, cap it at 16, they're going, man, I gotta sell a lot of homes to do what? Cap. cap, so I don't talk about it. I don't talk about any of that. Oh, I'm gonna go over that. I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> Great question. I'm so glad you asked that. Let me tell you, I gotta, you know, 90% of my stuff is visual and I'd love to get you on a webinar. We're doing a webinar next Tuesday or we're doing a Lunch and Learn next Wednesday, would you come to that and you'll see all this in, in person, okay? All righty, we're gonna start. I'm gonna start with this. Of course, Elizabeth can't read it because she's gonna read it and then she's gonna you know, get my thing, okay. Okay, okay, good. Th this, is, this is definitely going to be fun today because I want you guys to be very, very, this isn't like me telling you the best scripts. I want good scripts coming from you guys, okay? Because if they're working, that's why you get this group of people. Allison, you're going to have some, I know. I know Elizabeth's going to have some. Because, you know, we've been doing it for a lot longer, right? Three, almost four years, three and a half years. So you've got people in the room that have been doing this a long time. So they're going to go, wait, I say this. So I want it to be very thing. But um, number one coach in 2000 voted the number one coach of all time in America. Who was it? Coach in 2000. It's only 18 years ago. 
Not Lou Holtz. Good, good choice. John Wooden. Okay, John Wooden. John Wooden, if you don't know, only won 10 out of 12 years. 10 out of 12 years NCAA basketball, if you guys don't know the sport, UCLA. 10 out of 12 years, seven in a row. 10 out of 12 years. And I've read all of John Wooden's leadership books. If I was you, go get them. They're phenomenal. Now, in about the second paragraph, when I was reading the first book on leadership, he goes, I know what the key to success is. So what do you think the key to success is by John Wooden? Only the most successful coach we've ever seen. Simplicity. Simplicity. Let's think of it. What else? Let's say whatever you want. Tying your shoes or something. Tying your shoes. Close. Good habits. Good habits. Write it down. So he said the key to success in anything you do is creating the right habits. So what I want you to think of today, you literally um, are going to hear a lot of things. I'm going to share with you what to do. The reason Elizabeth and I have, and, and, and Allison too, are now being very successful at attracting people is we're creating good habits and they just become a habit and we're doing them over and over and over again. And that's all there is to it. How many people in here have sold like 20 homes in a month? One, two, three, right? A few of us. I have, right? Good habits, right? A lot of people go, you can't sell 20 homes in a month, but you just create better habits and what happens? Start stacking up. It's going to be the same thing in attracting agents. When you get, okay, right? So when I teach you these habits today, you're going to go, wow. Now, here's the other thing I will tell all of you. You won't like a lot of them. Does that make sense? Because you're going to go, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. Well, if you're not going to do it, you better replace it with something else. Okay? Because I think habits are the best. And I think after three, and eight, three years and how long have we been doing this, Elizabeth? Almost three years and ten months? Almost, almost four years of doing this, I think we've kind of got a good system down now that's working. Okay? Somebody asked me earlier, how did you start three and a half, whatever years ago? Elizabeth and I just met with people one-on-one. -on -one. Okay? So write that down. That's the first thing you're going to do. Meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Now, that's... Okay? Again, Belly to belly. Somebody wants to meet with you, meet with them. Very simple. Just so you know, it takes a long time. <laughs> right? Long time. I remember when um, Glenn came in, bless his heart, after about three weeks, um, uh, he was right in the middle. He said, Gene, I want to help you recruit people. I said, well, Glenn, you can come, but you can't talk. Here's the founder. He says, what do you mean? I said, dude, I'm in my element. I got five interviews a day, and I'm, I'm just in them. And, and you can come, you can sit there, but I'll, I'll motion to you if I want you to talk. Because these one-on-one -on -one meetings were like 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I had them, and all my agents knew, set them up at those times, no other times. And I went to the same coffee shop. Okay? Now, that will wear you out, just so you know. Those one-on-ones, that is the long haul. It will work, but I'm just telling you, after a while, we went, what should we be doing? What do you think we did? Lunch and learns. Write it down. Now, the lunch and learns, let me give you some techniques on the lunch and learns. Um, Lunch and learns to me are the very, very best. The reason they were working so well in the beginning is they were live. It's in person. And there's energy when you get people in person. Just is. You get testimonials. You get people that, we had people raising their hand. They've been with us two months. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love that. And I'm going, man, we've been here two months. I don't think we have anything. I mean, we didn't have KB Core. We didn't, I don't know what we had. Did we have anything, Elizabeth? 
other than, did we have KB Core back then? We had sync, didn't we? Sort or so, of. Sort of. Yeah. Kind of. But, but what I want you to do is, is uh, set a timetable to have the lunch and learns. At, and here's the best way. I'm cutting to the chase. It doesn't cost us anything anymore. Go to a mortgage company or a title company or something and l use their facilities. They will let you do it. In the beginning, we did ours at Macaroni Grill. No, Maggi Maggiano's. Maggiano's. Not Macaroni Grill. Maggiano's? Yeah. Maggiano, sorry, it was in a different M. But, but I paid for that room. <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, we didn't always pack the room. It never covered it. I don't know how much the room was, but I was losing, you know, hundreds of dollars every time we did it. But, but the bottom line was, I went, well, that's, what I, that's the only thing I knew. You can still do that, but you might want to get somebody to cover that lunch. Okay? How many people are doing lunch and learns now? There we go. Cool. By the way, they're really good in a new area too. I have people around the country that are going, Gene, I'm driving two hours to do a lunch and learn every Thursday in this area. Then I'm driving four hours over here doing a lunch and learn over here. So that way it doesn't get stale. All right. And I think after a while in Austin here, we've been doing them for three and a, uh, about three years now. And three years of lunch and learns, you know, it ran its course, right? So eventually, you know, you kind of go, well, I might not do them, but in the beginning, all you have to do on Lunch and Learns is teach your people to what? Teach the people underneath you to what? Get people there. That's it. Don't teach them to do the whole presentation that I'll show you today. Don't teach them to do everything. I want you to teach them because you're going to have somebody there that can do the presentation what? Really good. It works. Mm-hmm. A realistic goal is for, the, here's what realistic goal, have the agent show up. Because what I tell agents, if you want me to teach you and learn how to do this, you've got to show up every time, whether you bring somebody or not, because it creates energy. We were doing them in San Antonio in the beginning, and what's funny is we would get some really good crowds, and then, then it kind of waned, and then I'd look out there, and we might have one, one possible <laughs> agent there. And there'd be 20 EXP agents and one recruit. But guess what? They all came. And I think when they came, that energy, it, it, was, it really was good. But, you know, Rob and I started in Dallas and then San Antonio. And in Dallas, Rob didn't know anybody. He says, Gene, I'm just going around. I'm doing them for two people. I don't care if two people show up. I'm going to do the presentation. And then he'd go and there'd be three people next week. And he'd do the presentation. And then it built and built and built. And after a year, there'd be 55 people in the room. Same thing with Brent Gove in Sacramento when he first started doing them. He goes, Gene, there was nobody there, nobody there, then built and built, and then, then all of a sudden he was doing three a day, capping out at 40 people in the room. He'd just do them one day a week, but he'd do one at nine in the morning, one at noon, and one at uh, four o'clock. He'd actually turn people away. I, I was at him. He would have one door in, and people would stand out there and say, it's, you have to come back at noon. It was kind of cool. People want, what they can't get. People want what they can't get. They want a full room. So what I want you to tell you on the lunch and learns, it will build. Let it build. But you've got to get your people to be committed. Uh, some people are charging for the lunch and learns. Mm -hmm. People outside their uh, downline. How is that process being handled? Because the event rights are free, but then they do they charge them upon arrival or... We've been kind of having struggling with that a little bit. I don't know. We've never charged for them. Never charged. We've never charged. So I now now in San Antonio they were doing it at Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Yeah. Now I got news for you. Good food. Just so you know. I mean, actually, sometimes it was kind of like Ruth Chris. I'm coming. Um, but they did charge. They charged everybody. Whoever came in, it was you know like twenty bucks to to eat there that day. But but it was really good food, and they did pack them in. But they charge everybody. They wouldn't charge people that weren't in somebody's. And by the way, this is another thing to talk about. We don't, we don't really care what rev share team they're in. We just do them. And we would also, if I was bringing a guest and there was a situation where you had to pay, I would pay for my guests. You know, I, I didn't have my guests pay, so. But we didn't charge here locally. Yeah, we, we ended up not charging 
as much as we could because we just wanted them there. The lunch and learns, what I like about them, I'm gonna be blunt, it's not a bait and switch. It's just bait. No, I'm just kidding. It's just a switch. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever that means. In other words, we weren't telling everybody, hey, come do this and we're going to spring EXP on you. We were telling them, hey, we're going to share with you what we're about. And, and, and I would tell people up front, just so you know, there's no obligation. These are good scripts. There's no obligation. Just come and see what the model's about. It's a brand new model for real estate brokerages. Use whatever you want. It's the Netflix. If you want to see what Netflix looks like in our business, come see this. You won't believe it. Do you have um, a couple samples of a good invite that has worked really well for you? Uh, the best script I've got is this. You call them up. Hello. Okay. Take it from there. That's the best script I got. See, the hardest thing is people just don't call. You can. You know, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can invite whatever you want. I think the best, people are coming because of relationships. Like I just did a transaction with Bob. He's at Coal Banker. I just did one with him last week, right? So once we got it closed, I'd go, Bob, hey, now, now here's the scripts I would use. I wouldn't say, hey, Bob, have you heard about EXP? See, that's a yes and no question. That's like saying, do you want, do you, you know, you go into a, a clothing store and they go, do you, can I help you today? And you go, just looking. just looking. So you don't ask yes or no questions. You go, Bob, it was a pleasure working with you. You know what? I'd love to invite you to a presentation we're doing next Wednesday to explain what we're about. Um, I'll pay for the lunch. It's over here. By the way, no obligation. Just, we're just going to present EXP to you. And he'll go, whatever he says after that, we take it from there. He could say, no, I don't want to come. You go, fine, I'll catch you another time. If he says, I've already heard about EXP, you go, well, you know what? I'd love to see, have you see the updated version. I mean, really, because I don't care when he's seen it, right? Now, if the gate's up, which I get the gate up a lot. You will get the gate up. It's like, eh, eh, don't talk to me. Eh, eh. You just go on. I don't take it personal. I go, Bob, I got to tell you, it was a pleasure working with you. Hope I work another transaction with you. Okay? You're going to meet 2 million people this year at, at all your NAR stuff, right? You're going to get them on webinars. You're going to send them a really nice webinar. Hopefully I can do the presentation well today. Let's it's hope. On it's on me. But if I do the presentation well enough and we can it and we can edit it, then you could send that to them, right? And, and when you send it to them, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I want you to watch it with them. Right? It's like sending them a, a watch this video on how to eat correctly. <laughs> You think I'm watching that one? Okay. You know, but if I watch it with you, you got a chance of them. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Um, so we've been doing a lot of attraction within our local community, which is, yep. you know, pretty easy to start a conversation. What, besides hello, what is the conversation when you're attracting people outside of the state, outside of your local area? You know, yeah. Uh, you know, you can use what, again, I, I always tell people to be there themselves because when I go to the Northeast, they're a lot more uh, abrupt. I'm serious when I do these scripts. When I go to the Northeast, they go, hey, just tell them they're stupid. They're stupid. You should look at this. And I go, wait, they're in the South, man. We never say that crap, you know? And I go, whoa, you're blowing me away. But in the Northeast, you know, it's like, dude, have you seen this? Have you really seen it? Have you really seen it? Have you looked at the webinar? Because if they give you a lot of objections, have you really seen the webinar? That's how we got Rick Jiha. Because Brent Gove called up Rick Jiha, and Rick Jiha goes, oh, I've seen it. And, and Brent Gove goes, well, who'd you hear it from? He goes, well, I know Gene Frederick. I heard it from Gene Frederick. And Brent Gove goes, have you seen the webinar? And Rick had to admit, no, I haven't seen the webinar. And he goes, well, then you haven't seen it. And why don't you look at the webinar with me? Well, he was lying 
He never talked to me. Right? Rick Jeha, little liar, little liar, 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 pants on fire. You know, he, he was just trying to do what? Get rid of the call. Right? So, so they looked at it. He said, I want you to look at this with me tonight. The next morning, Rick called and goes, I can't believe it. Right? I can't sleep. We have brokers that have their property management companies. Since we don't have the property management aspect in EXP, how would we respond to that? What do we... Oh, he was asking about property management. I just tell him we do, currently we don't, we don't handle property management. You have to keep that separate <laughs> as another broker underneath a bro another broker. That's it. It's okay. Bring all your sales team over. Keep that property management separate. It's real simple, actually. They'll understand that, by the way, because all the lawsuits are in property management. Yes. <laughs> right? We have that being in Florida. We have that conversation daily. <laughs> <laughs> Here's here's the things I would the intros that I use a lot with realtors. It seems to work, especially outside your area. How's your market? When you're going to all this NAR stuff and things, you're gonna meet people from all over. How's it going? Hey, how's it going in Lubbock? How's it going in uh, you know just how's it going in your area? They love to tell you. They love to tell you average days on the market. Hey, yeah, la, 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 la. If they're numbers people, you'll actually know who you've got by their response, right? If they start talking numbers, they're a high C and they're very detailed. And, and, and I said, well, how's the market, man? Um, do you think our industry is changing? I ask that one all the time. Think our industry is changing? Oh. What do you think of Zillow? Right? You'll get, you'll get all kinds of stuff, right? And then, <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, I'm curious, but, and this is how I got uh, the big man up here, Mitch, is, you know, where do you see yourself in five years? And you can even ask just blunt, open end of, where do you see the industry in five years? Then where do you see yourself in five years? Make it personal. By the way, I'm just curious, what's your, what's your retirement plan? What's your exit strategy from the industry? By the way, this works in all age groups. It works in all age groups. It doesn't matter if the person's a millennial and they're, it, it, it just, it, you, it works with everybody. Because everybody's going, wait, they're not even close to retirement age. Believe me, they're thinking about it. Because if they've been selling for over five years, there's one thing I know for a fact. They want out at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Is this not true? Yes. Guys, I, my first five years in the business, I sold almost 500 homes. I sold only 14 my first year. And then I went, then I sold 56, then I sold 120, 120, 120. I mean, I was selling, and, and then after five years, I went, man, if I have to show another buyer, I think I'm going to, you know. And I started my own real estate company. How crazy was that? Really not a smart idea, but I get bored, right? I got bored. Agents get bored. I mean, let's face it. In your own little market, how many times can you show those same homes on the same area? And, the, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I get bored. So, um, that's, this is what I want to, you know, and I'll share this with you real quick. So, then we're going to get into uh, how do you get personals. Does everybody know what a personal is? <laughs> that's, no, no, that's, that's your, I want to I wanna share this with you. A personal is somebody on your first line, your first level. Somebody you sponsor, right? How many have sponsored more than five? Raise your hand. Good. 10, keep them up. 15, wow, we got some studs in here. 
20, they're still up. 25? Yeah, well, no, they got to be FLQRs. <laughs> 25? Did you go down? You're at 25? Yeah, I was 37. You're at 37. You went down to 25 with the la latest FLQR change. I went from 46 down to 30. Oh. It hurt me, right? But that's okay. We've been overpaid for a couple of years. Don't worry. We really have been. You know, that's the way I'm looking at it. Don't worry. It's not a change to our system. It's just we're doing it the way we should have done it. Okay? Now, saying that, so I've got 30. Um, what I want you to do is concentrate on personals first. Okay? So think of this. The hardest thing is we're all helpers as realtors. And, 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 the, and the thing is, you will start getting a team pretty quick once you have five or ten people. But you really need to work on your own what? Personals. All right? So write down right now. What your goal is for how many personals you're going to have. This is a workshop. you got to work. Because great notes, but okay, now it's time to implement a plan. How many personals do you want to have every single month from here on to the end of the year? Okay? We're in February, right? We're going to pretend like we're just starting February 1st, even though it's February 5th or whatever. So you got 11 more months, right? How many do you want to attract every single month? Write it down. By the way, there's no right or wrong. It's just your goal, right? But I believe in goals because uh, it was funny. When we started this, I had no idea what was going to happen. I'd been retired for a year, so here I am going back into doing, you know. My goal for the first year was 200 agents in Texas. Guess how many we had after a year? 200. Not 199, not 201. It was freaky to me. Cool. <laughs> it was freaky. It, it was kind of like, well, wait, I had a goal of 200, and it was 200. I just believe in goal setting. I don't know why, because I think it's, it's kind of like now. A lot of people go, um, well, I'm going to set a high goal, low goal. I don't know how you guys work, but without a goal, you're not going to do anything. Okay, so how many per month? Write it down. Now we're going to do a game plan for how to achieve it. It's your game plan. Would you do a first line goal and an, a total goal? Like what are some, how do you set it? I, I, I've always done mine like a monthly and yearly. You know, I did a yearly thing just to say, well, gosh, if we had 200 agents in a year, I mean, I've got all my stuff. You gotta understand, I used to be a, uh, a CFO for corporations, so it's not good. It's not good. I, I, I actually three-hole punched all my goals from my first. I got them all, and it's just kind of fun sometimes to look back and go, "What was I thinking there?" Or you know, because it's just it's just me, my own mind. Because we're gonna create our own reality. Here's the problem: you have what I call old tapes. The old tape is you're not a recruiter. You're not an attractor. You're just a real estate agent. Be quiet and sell homes. That's an old tape. Right? They're old tapes in your mind. They're not my mind. And the bottom line is, is uh, uh, Elizabeth and I have talked about that. She won't mind if I use her. Elizabeth's one of the best recruiters I know. Sometimes she goes, Gene, I have a hard time attracting really top agents. We talked about that. Oh, well, she's only number one in EXP, you know, two years in a row. Was. Was. But, but, but what I'm saying is she goes, I have a hard time, in her mind, if you don't mind me using Elizabeth, attracting people that do more production than what? Me. Get over it. Just so you know, they don't know how much production you're doing. They don't know what you're doing. And, and, and so whatever these old tapes are, get rid of them. And come to Eugenio land. And we're going to have fun today. I just want you to get rid of those old, because people, are, I'm, I'm, after even if this class, you're going to go back to wherever you come from, and you go, man, I was a gossip class, got all these scripts, all these things, I'm going to go recruit X per month, and somebody that you know is going to go, oh, really? <sighs> really? You're going to do that? Really? And they're going to try to do what? 
be a naysayer. Stay away from them. Don't let them into, world, into your world. Stay with this group. When you want positive feedback, call each other. Okay? It's really important, guys, because I'm just telling you, it's the reason the top attractors, when I say top attractors, we all hang out together and we all talk because we literally had a, I can remember, we had, we'd been doing this not even a year and we're smoking cigars in the back of and we had just gotten 200 agents in a year. By the way, most of them had just started. I'd been doing it, and Elizabeth and I, and we're out there smoking. We were in, uh, in Bellingham, or where was that? In the Bellingham. shareholders in Bellingham. We're out there smoking, and I can remember we had 200 agents in Texas. I'll never forget this. And we're like, well, how many are we going to have in five months? And we're all like, rawr, rawr, rawr. And, and, and Scott Lewis, I'll never remember, he looks at me and goes, well, Gene, we're going to have 500 people in five months. I go, what's he smoking, dude? Oh, cigar. But what's he, you know, in other words, I'm going, what are you talking about, dude? It took us a year to get to 200. We can't, we can't add 300 people net in five months. He goes, Gene, it's going to happen. I can see it, baby. You know, and we're, there's like five or six. Of, we're just, we're just being, you know, there's women out there too. We're like, ah, you know, we're going to do this, right? Guess what we had after five months? Over 500. It was working. I want to hang out with you guys. In other words, I looked at them and went, you're my peeps. You think big. So write that down. Think big. You know, quite honestly, we never think big enough. Because, like, who would you say uh, earlier? Was it not to say? What's realistic? What's realistic? How many people should, should come to it? What's realistic? I mean, let's don't go overboard. <laughs> like, like, I could bring five people to a meeting, right? What's realistic? So basically, I can set a goal that I can hit. Um, for other, was it for you? <laughs> was it for you? But but see see how we instantly the words mean everything because it's like well, then I'll I'll hit my goal. And I'll feel good. How do you think the New England felt that it was the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever? They won the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. <laughs> do you think they ever cared that it was thirteen to three or some? Or, no, because guess what? They won. Yeah, baby. So, so I want you guys to think bigger than you've ever thought because this is a brand new model. Okay, it is a brand new model. All right, so let's talk about um, here's what I'm going to share with you real quick. So Let's share with this. Now, I only share this with you. Please do not share it with anybody else. This is just for us. All right, please, because I don't want this out there. But after the first year I was here, I, I had 15 personals. 15 personals, okay, turned into 183 people, one through seven. The next year I had a total of 22 personals, and I had 1301. Does this make sense to any of you? Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. I only added seven people to my personals, and my, my one through seven went what? Crazy. 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 Then the next year, I had 33, and I had 42.69. Now, I'm not yet my fourth year, but I'm already over 6,500. So I've got to the end of April. So I've got one, two, three more months. I, I think I know I'll be over 7,000, but uh, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter to me. And of course, I'll be over 40, right? I better be, right? But, but, but if I'm over 40 and I have 7,000, the only reason I share this with an attraction class like this is because 
having the seven tiers creates, creates math, massive revenue share wealth. That's generational. It's going to go way past it. It's willable. So the, the income that Elizabeth and I have been accumulating, and Elizabeth's one of the top ones too, is the fact is, after four years, I never, we never sat down together and go, you, after four years, yeah, Gene, you'll have 7,000 people that I'm getting paid on. This is one through seven. It can happen to everybody in this room. Just so you know, Rob's underneath me. He has more people than me. I always like telling that because everybody goes, well, you're on the top. I go, no, I'm not the top, you know, because anybody underneath you could have more people than you. Right? But I, but I only share that because I'm thinking bigger now. <laughs> right? What's it going to be in four years? Do you guys know how much... Uh, uh, revenue share per agent, Glenn lets us say? $1,000. Right, Glenn? Glenn t lets us say that. You know, if you're over 40, you've got to be over 40 to get all seven levels. But if you're over 40, so everybody goes, well, wait, wait, Gene, th that's seven million a year. Yes. Why do you think I gave away two and a half million? Because I can. And I only share that with you because we never talked about it. We never talked about these numbers. We never, we never even thought about these numbers. Well, I didn't get this. You got this better than but I. But I, I got the fact, because I was at KW early, that if this panned out big, you want to, and by the way, this is the right time, right place. You, you're, you, there's, there are going to be people in this room that do more than me. That's what's exciting to me. It's not like, you know what I mean? I'm just sharing with you because this is real. But I have to concentrate on what? What are those? Personals. Okay. Yep. So I've had people say, they say, uh, well, all the big fish are gone now. <laughs> Several people say, well, all the big fish are gone now, so I won't ever hit those type of numbers. What, what's your response to that? Well, we've got... Um, uh, Two million realtors in the United States, only about 1.3 are with NAR. There's two million realtors, and we have 17,000 of them. I don't think we're done yet. Where would you say we are on the business S curve? You know, where you go into momentum. We're 5% done. This is what I actually tell everybody. It's the bottom of the slope. Right? Yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're in the, uh, the start, launch phase, whatever you want to call it. We're still in launch. Hey, there's, there's a good quote. She's trying to get me to say this. is Because uh, uh, a lot of people think they missed out. All the big fish are gone. The stat is from NAR that five years from now, all the real estate sold in America, about 70 to 80% of the realtors aren't in the business yet. 70 to 80%. Now, I kept track of this when I was at KW one time because I stayed in an office four years. And I actually kept track of it. It was real. So even if you just get into it now, the agents that are going to be the big dogs are going to be the big dog three years from now, two years from now. They just got in today. We get 50, 50 to 80 a month at our board. Right. So. Well, and, and here's what I tell everybody. Since I know the attrition factor <coughs> in real estate is about 30% for NAR, if there's 2 million people, then 30% of 2 million is 600,000. And people go, there's 600,000 people leaving the industry this year? I go, yeah, but 600,000 what? Join. Okay? So it's not going to be the old timers. You're going you're gonna to be getting people that are, they're just new to the business. So really, actually, there's no such thing as too late. There's no such thing as all the big dogs are gone. But when they say, oh my gosh, you've got, uh, especially in an area like Texas, you know, in Austin, sometimes I'll hear, oh gosh, Austin's already done. I said, Austin's already done. We have 450 agents. We got 10,000 agents in Austin. We're, we're, we're just starting. Okay, some areas will be more than others. But, but quite honestly, 
Florida has how many agents? 140,000, 150,000? 157, and we got, we got 1,600 of them? Right? Yeah, 10,000 in Austin. Texas has 123,000 agents. I just read it in our deal. Huh? I thought 157. About a 157. California is number one. California is number one. If you count everybody, not just boards of realtors, they got 500,000. Okay? Okay, you want to take a couple minute break real quick? Just so I can, you know, five minute break, okay? Because we're doing good. Is it going good? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you, and then we're going to do a work plan on where to go get them. Where to go get the agents. Uh, as you guys know, with my Lunch and Learns, I tell a lot of stories. People buy stories, right? They don't buy flip charts. They don't buy PowerPoints. If you guys, wait, I got the best PowerPoint. <laughs> Nobody buys a PowerPoint, okay? In fact, I've always thought that PowerPoints were pretty much for people that can't present. <laughs> Realistically, right? Because we don't need PowerPoints if we know where we're going, right? That's why I told Glenn, Glenn, you can come uh, after, uh, you know, he came three weeks after. He was so cute, and he was great. Glenn's so much fun to work with. He says, okay, I'll come. He was all decked out in his suit, and he'd sit down there with me at the corner bakery, and he'd sit, and I'd do the interview, and I'd go, how do you think it went? And he goes, man, that was good, Gene. And that's funny. That was good. He didn't say a word. He did exactly what I asked him not to do because it was my presentation, right? It's my listing presentation, and I was on a roll. We, uh, I had 20 interviews my first month, 18 signed up. Now, a lot of them were Elizabeth's people, so they were kind of easy. She prepped them, and then I interviewed them for her, right? But of the 18, two did not sign up. One signed up a month later, one signed up nine months later. I've never been 20 for 20 before, ever, in the history of real estate. Why? Different model. And also, I practiced my presentation for three months. In other words, what I'd like to do is show you my presentation if I can. Does, is that okay? Yep, yep. Because I really, you know, a lot of people are asking me all the time, can you, you know, show that? And, I, and I've actually been doing one-on-ones with people, and it's wearing me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't wear me out, but Elizabeth, Elizabeth knows. We, uh, Elizabeth gets called a lot because she's, she's an individual producer that, you know, three-way calls, right? And I get calls all the time. And they're not in our rev share team. We don't care. Okay? Let me get some water. Sorry about this. Let me get some iced tea. Thanks, Zach. All right. Love it, love it. Let's thank Mitch again for bringing you all here. He's the man. <laughs> Woo! Dude. Mmm. It takes a lot of leadership to do that. Okay, here's what I want you to do uh, before I get into the presentation. Is everybody always asks me, where do I get agents? It's like lead generation 101, right? I'm going to give you, just write these down, and then, and then I want you to pick a couple that you're going to do. You, just write them down, because you might not do one now, you might do another one. Here's one, okay? Social media. It's probably my number one way right now. I hired a uh, Marianne Collins, we know her. She goes, Gene, I'm not gonna recruit people. I don't recruit people, I don't recruit people, that's not me. She changed her status on LinkedIn. An agent from Massachusetts, Martha's Vineyard, Sotheby's, contacts her, we recruit her in three days. She goes, I didn't know that would happen. Right? Social media is the bomb. And she didn't have to do anything. She didn't even know what to do. She goes, what do I do, Gene? I said, I don't know, just get them on the phone with me and we'll do a presentation. Uh, we got one, we're gonna have the first agent in Martha's Vineyard and she's bringing four other Sotheby people. They're all cappers, her first transaction will be 8.4 million. Okay? And you know what I did? I gotta tell you this really quick. She goes, well, we're from Sotheby's, you're gonna love this, Elizabeth. 
She goes, we're, we're from Sotheby's. I said, who are they? <laughs> I, lit, you, I was on the phone. It was great. No, you, she goes, well, no, we're Sotheby's. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I, I, we, don't, we don't have those in Austin. Who are they? I said, is it named after Mr. or Mrs. Sotheby's? She goes, no, 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 we're Sotheby's. And I said, well, wait, 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 are you that auction company? Do you guys sell homes by auction? And she, it was awesome. It was awesome. And, and Marianne goes, God, that was pretty good. And I said, well, you know what? I'm tired of them going, who's EXP? So I just went, who's Sotheby's? And I just played it back. It was awesome. I was really good. No, I was really good that day. By the way, they're not hardly anything here, are they? Not really. No. Not really, right? But they think they have the what? The name, Sotheby's. I don't know what Sotheby's is. I said, is that that auction house where you buy paintings? Okay. So, <clears throat> if you're really good on social media, I want, and you really know how to use that, you know, uh, forum, really, I think it's the number one best way to get people, right? You know, you, you should announce to your Facebook people and your LinkedIn people, I've changed. They will contact you, okay? Announcement, here I am. I've had some really good ones, some really, uh, uh, what's her name? Julie Nelson did the best one, I thought, when she announced when she left KW. She, she did a big thank you to all the other people. She, you know, really buttered it up and then said, and I'm over here now. And, and you know, shoot, you know, you might want to do one of those announcements every three months. They never saw the first one. <laughs> you know, I just moved three months ago. I just moved six months ago. I just moved nine months ago. Hey, it's my year anniversary. Okay, and here's what I did before, and this is something I did in the beginning, because I am not a social media person, if you guys know me. I had my daughter pull everybody in social media that was in my social media that was an agent, because I didn't know I was friends with all these people. All right, and then we started calling them. I like phone calls, but I'm old school. I like phone calls because even if they, I don't get them, I can leave a nice message. And I think it's personal. Okay, here's another one. This is the number two way. Real estate vendors, mortgage, title, home warranty, your lawn guy, I don't care who it is, they know real estate agents. Here's what I want you to script to them. Do you know of any really good real estate agents? You know, the up and comers. Because realistically, you notice I didn't say, give me all the people that hate it where they live. <laughs> Don't do that. They're going to send you the complainers. There's always the up and comer. Because if they've been at a, a company for two or three years, and they're not, the, the roots aren't deep yet. And they'll look at you. Okay? So the number one way, I, could, I, I used to sell franchises for a living. And I'd go into towns that I knew nobody. And I'd go in and I'd talk to three title companies. I said, give me your top 25, 30 people in the market. I didn't have to pull broker metrics. I didn't have to do any of that. I just got it from them and then I'd call the people and I said, oh, I heard you were awesome. Man, you're, you're the Remax. You're like the icon of Remax. Everybody says Remax, they say your name. I've called three type companies and they, they say you're the bomb. Hey, do you mind checking out this new model I've got? Okay. Teach at the schools. And this is, this is one that we talked about last night. Or in our industry. Uh, National Association of Realtors, anything. Become a teacher. If you're constantly teaching around the nation, I've got a lot of teachers now that are joining us. They're figuring out. They know a lot of people. And if you taught, and that's why people at Keller Williams know me, is I taught at Keller Williams for years. And I get people all the time, Gene, I was in a class with you in 2005. Really? Yeah, I remember when you taught this. And of course, I don't know them. I can't remember. I really do. I said, I can't re I'm sorry, I can't remember. Well, you wouldn't remember me. I was one of 300 people in your class. But if you can get in front of people as what? The authority on something? Become the authority on one thing. Mine was lead generation. I wrote a book on it, 101 Ways to Lead Generate in Real Estate. You can get it on Amazon if you want. It helps the grandbabies. I don't even know if we make money on it. But the bottom line is, is I just got tired of becoming an expert at something. Okay? Um, Go to the real estate seminars. Here's my feeling. Go somewhere other than your place. It's cool that you're in Austin this week. You know, go somewhere outside of your territory. If Mike Ferry's in town, Tom Ferry, Brian Buffini, 
Um, you know, what's the one in Miami that's going on? T 10X? I went there last this past weekend. Did you? Was it good, the 10X? I mean, what a great place to go, 10X. Stadium. A stadium. <laughs> well, that's a cool thing. I mean, that's how many people are there. 35,000 people. You might as well go where they are. You know, in other words, I know there's a lot of realtors there, right? Going, how am I going to 10X my business? Guess what? And you're all in it together. Um, what's the other one where you walk on fire? Uh, Anthony Tony Robbins. Robbins. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins. In Elizabeth, well, why should I go to that? Well, you know what? Go to it if you enjoy it. And you're among your peeps. Yeah, this is my fourth Tony Robbins thing. And you're all talking and, yeah, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Indianapolis. Oh, you're from Indianapolis. Oh, I'm, oh my gosh. How's the market there? Tell me about yourself. It's not hard. It's called effort, right? Okay, here's an easy one that we've done before. Ask all the professionals that in your market or anywhere what realtor they use. Just ask them. Your dentist, your doctor, anybody that's a professional because they know people that are good realtors and they will tell you and they'll go, cool. You're just getting realtors' names. Because a lot of people get frustrated. They go, Gene, I think everybody in my town's been called. Really? <laughs> I don't think so. First of all, you know, we're not, you guys know not to do mass emails, right? And do, don't do anything with mass except for Sunday morning or Saturday night. All us Catholics, right? You can do mass there. But don't do any mass emailing, mass anything. All right? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. People go, yeah, I'm going to do 10,000 agents in Wichita, Kansas. It doesn't work. You're going to get, by the way, the agents that do call on the mass stuff, you don't want anyway. I'm telling you, I've done it over and over again. They just don't work. Um, here's another one, believe it or not. It, it, again, it's belly to belly stuff. Go to open houses. Go to open houses. Saturday and Sunday, here's what we did. We went to open houses and looked for people that had good energy. Again, I'm looking for good energy. If I went in the open house and, boy, that was a professional. She was sharp, man, or, you know, wow. Okay, good, cool. Getting that card, saying, cool. It's just another, you know, and you can follow up on these things all day long. Uh, your own real estate transactions, current and past. A lot of people go, well, what do you mean? I mean, if you guys have been doing this for 5, 10, 15 years, go back to the old ones. Call them up. You're assuming everybody's been talking to them. They haven't. Okay? 55% of NAR are independents. Okay? Everybody thinks that everybody's coming from, only 45% of our people are coming from franchises because that's what NAR is made up of. 55% is independents, 45% are franchises. A lot of people go, ah, you know, if you go to your local bowl, you'll find out in Austin here, we have 2 million small brokers. I mean, literally 2,000 or 3,000 that have one or two people. There's a lot of, that money. There's a lot of it everywhere. And, and a lot of people think, oh, it's the big players. It's not. Go to all, you know, make sure you, you go to all these folks. Um, and the other thing, the niche that I've had a lot of people do is uh, the niche. What I mean by niche, if um, ARIA, you know, we've got uh, Tommy Trong. Tommy Trong is the current president of ARIA, Asian Real Estate Association. 17,000 members in America, right? Uh, what's the uh, NAREP? NAREP. NAREP, right? Uh, National Hispanic Real Estate Association. Any niche, any niche you want to get into, international, anything international, guys, I would get into it. Why? You're in a niche with everybody else that's doing international, and where do you think we're going to go in the near future? International. So a lot of people go, I can't find realtors. I said, no, you're just not looking. The last place I would look, again, is in the Starbucks line, because we're all there. All right? <laughs> go to Starbucks line three times a day, you'll run into five realtors. Right? And you can spot realtors. I have a question. Yeah. What about former team leaders and managers from other companies? Love them. Mm -hmm. And the major franchises of both of those. Yep. And they all have, you know, 10 or 20 percent of the office that'll follow them. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's what I am. I haven't sold real estate for 20 years. Uh, 1999 was my last contract. So 
this is my 20th anniversary of not selling anything. My wife's been selling, so I get to see the frustration of a realtor, <laughs> believe me, you know, on a daily basis. But, but quite honestly, selling real estate has not kept me from attracting real estate agents. In fact, actually, it, I just have more time. Okay, so, so what, where you guys go wrong is you go, well, do I have to give up my sales? No. What you do have to do is notch out some time, right? That, that lunch and learn should be in there. There's an hour and a half, okay? If you had two days a week where you invited 30, 38 minutes, 30 minutes, and invited people to the lunch and learn, okay, now we're, at, we're up to two and a half hours. There you go. You can't spot two and a half hours? Exactly. And he says, Gene, I don't even know if I did it very well. I just did it. The key thing is, what did John Wooden say? It's creating what? The habits. The habits are all the key. A lot of people go, and Elizabeth knows it from working with me for a long time. My appointments are 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock. I've been doing that for about 15 years. So agents go, well, when can I set up a meeting? She already knows. But Jean, I got one next Tuesday at uh, 3 o'clock for you. Because she already knows if she sets it up for next Tuesday at 3 o'clock, I, I, I'll say if I have a double booked, I'll correct it. But, but I'm very systematic and I'm very, you know, it's the same old stuff. In other words, I'm, I've got really good habits. And I don't do everything early morning. Why don't I do things early morning? Because I don't want to deal with rush hour. Do you guys like rush hour? Okay, I'm going to do a couple other things that will go on, okay? What time is it? We're doing good? Okay, how many people in here, raise your hand if you have a wealth chart. Okay, if you don't have a wealth chart, you need to get one. And I would recommend getting Rob Flick's video on how to do the wealth chart. I'll get that to you later. Because if you don't have a wealth chart, it's the way of, of tracking getting 5, then 10, then 15, then 20, okay? Here's the one thing I would do tonight, since you guys are all staying tonight or whatever. Make a list of future EXP agents. You notice how I changed my words. They're going to be future EXP agents. I've had Marianne Collins on my list for three years and nine months. I've had Trey Williams on my list for three years. If you're on my list, you don't go away. You're just future EXP agents. And a lot of people go, well, how do you do it? And I said, I do it by hand. I literally write them down. It's very therapeutic to go, okay, why didn't I call Robert Creamer? I should call Robert Creamer again. He was on my list forever. He finally came. You know, you get people, how long does it take to get people? I don't know, but they're on my list. And I literally keep track of them by hand. Um, so your strategy to meet new personals. Anybody got a couple picked out? Let's take 15 seconds and pick them out. Circle the ones you're going to do. Okay, 30 seconds. Hey, Gene. Yeah. Do you have an um, open ended question for, you know, for people we already know find their uh, pain point? I just, I just usually ask them, you know, what's your, what's your five year game plan for, you know, the industry, for your. You know, what's your five-year goals? Okay. And actually, when I say five-year goals, it could, they instantly go to what? Production. That is really weird how they go to the production. I said, no, no, no. Besides production, I let them talk for a little bit. Besides production, what's your five-year goals for wealth? For wealth creation. Because actually, I'm a wealth creator. That's, that's how I called myself when I was a team leader and a manager. I never called myself a team leader. A lot of people put CEO or something. I don't know what that was all about. I was a wealth creator for agents at KW. I'd try to get you to own a market center. I'd like you to get you into maps. I'd like to, I was a wealth creator. And that's really what I am here at, e, at EXP. I'm just doing it in different ways. I'm doing it through stock and rev share. Stock and rev share. I'm a wealth creator. I'm just curious. How much stock do you own of Coal Banker? I'm just curious. How much stock do you own of Tropical Real Estate? Boy, I would have just torn his company apart. 
No, I'm just kidding. You know what I mean, right? You know what I mean? In other words, you know, how much do you own of the company you're with? And by the way, I get personal. Dave Linegar. Who does Dave Linegar run? Remax. How much stock has Dave Linegar given you? When I talk to the Remax people, I use Dave's name. And they go, what do you mean? Dave's given me nothing. I said, Dave hasn't given you anything? I said, Glenn Sanford, my gosh. Glenn Sanford, our owner? He created a plan where you can earn stock for just doing the production. Oh, I can't wait to show that to you. It's 90% visual. You've got to come next Wednesday. Well, how do teams work? Oh my gosh, that's too much detail right now. You know what? It, it, come next Wednesday, we explain it there. And if you have any other questions, I'm going to get you on with Bob Andrews. Bob is a great, he brought over his team, and he'll share with you all the team structure. I play dumb. Again, for all you people that go, you don't understand, they ask me why I like it. Doesn't mean you have to answer it. Well, how's teams work? Oh my gosh. I want to make sure I can talk to them when? Again. Why answer everything in the first meeting? That was a great question on teams. You know what? I, I, you know, I want to make sure. I'm going to get you on with Elizabeth. Elizabeth knows more about teams. You know, I just parlay it to what? Another expert. Yeah, could, you, could you repeat that once more about uh, the what? as far as uh, David Leninger? Uh, I'm writing this down. Well, Dave Linegar is the owner of Remax. He started it in 1972. And so I said, how much stock does, has Dave Linegar given you? How many are from ex-Remax people? I am. How much do we own? Zero. I tell people if, if, if Dave Linegar would have given me stock in 1987, I'd still be there. If Gary Keller would have given me stock in 1994, I'd still be there. Glenn, Ke Glenn Sanford said, stock's available to you. I'm here. Go earn it. It's not given to you, but it's, you know, and then you go in. It's, it's, it's a game changer to me. The, the whole thing on stock is the game changer for me because it's ownership. We all own it. Right? This is huge. So um, here's what I want to tell you. You got the couple picked out that you're going to do so you can do your game plan tonight. Okay. Now, creating your team, I want to give you a couple other things real quick, because I mean, I'm giving you a whole bunch in one, I'm sorry, I just got to do it. Is that all right? As everybody goes, well, I've recruited 10 people, I get this a lot. Gene, I've, I've attracted 10, 15 people, but I don't have anybody on my second tier. Has that happened to anybody in here? Yep. Okay. It's because you have to teach duplication, duplication, whatever that word is. <laughs> whatever that is, create it up. So in other words, everybody that you attract, you get them to do the wealth chart. Write it down. You have to give it to everybody. Don't prejudge. You know, when Mary Ann Collins, I just joined her. Gene, I'm not going to attract anybody. I'm never going to do it. I've been in business 24 years, same company. I'm never, ever, ever going to attract anybody. Her first day, she pushes the button. Somebody contacts her. Okay? I got to get her the wealth chart so I can see there's your first one. And we're going to work on five. Okay? You need to have, if you want to create a team, you guys need to have weekly accountability calls with all your people. Okay? Just start it from scratch. You go, well, Gina, I only got two people on my team. Start it now. The day to put, start a habit is now, right? Don't, don't wait. Well, I'm not going to start doing this calls until I get 85 people. You're crazy. So a lot of people that do the weekly accountability calls and recognitions are webinars, <laughs> Zoom, text. I have people doing them all different way. Do them the way you like to do them, right? A lot of people just do a Zoom call once a week and every, all their team gets on it. They, they do a 15 minute call on attraction, what's working, what's not, and then they give recognition. Oh, Susie just got one. Susie, hey, tell us about how you just got that person. You're creating a team. Your team. Your first line. Now you can combo it with other people. There's no reason you can't. You know what I mean? You know, combo it with two or three of you. The people in Charlotte, North Carolina are the best I've ever seen. There's like eight of them. They started there. Within about a year, they had 500 agents in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
I mean, they're, they're teaming. They're all teaming together. They're all doing all this stuff. I mean, they're just constantly doing training and, and you know, it's awesome. And I've never seen anything like it. They're just the best fun to people to, to meet. Um, you got to teach your people every week how to invite. If you don't teach them, that's the reason you only have 10 people and nobody's duplicating. Because you haven't taught them how to what? Invite to the next thing. Even, even to, to, it, to invite to a webinar or a, a, a lunch and learn or, or invite them to see the webinar. What I mean by webinar is again, I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to record one today. We're going to, that's what we're really going to do. Hopefully it's a good one. You can use Brent Goves. You can use other people's. I mean, some people are still using mine from a year and a half ago, which is way too long. And the numbers are all off, right? And I'm much better looking in person. No, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> I'm much better per looking now. It was too grainy. Um, so use your three-way calls, okay? And, and most of all, when you're doing your teamwork, have fun with it. Just have fun. I'm just trying to give you things that have worked for us the last three and a half years. The, the, the biggest teams I've got, they're just having fun. I mean, Rob and I got in trouble the first year because Rob and I went, well, we just want to have fun with our people, so we're going to go to Mexico. And then everybody goes, oh, they're going to Mexico. And I go, well, we're just, I didn't know that was a bad thing. We're just going to Mexico. Whoever wants to go, go. And then we did Mexico uh, six months. It's actually been the best trips we've ever had because once you got sandals on and, you know, everybody's just talking and people bought recruits and it was like, it was more fun than I've ever, ever had. As we just said, well, you know, we're not paying for them to go to Mexico. We're just saying we're going to Mexico with our group. Who wants to go? Woo! So do things fun for you guys, right? Rob and I are finally are doing another one. Uh, we, we skipped a year, but I think we're doing one this coming January. Rob's got, and it's, it's I, I don't know, it's going to be huge. But it's fun. We really don't do a lot of training. <laughs> we, do a lot of, we do a lot of beach action, a lot of golf. And a, a lot of, lot of all-inclusive. A <laughs> <laughs> lot of all-inclusive. But a lot of people said, and, and, and Elizabeth knows it, my, my thing is, let's make real estate fun again. Well, just so uh, you guys all know, we're all invited to that thing. If, um, we get the links. And yes. If you want to go to that thing, it's a $500 deposit right now. I forget the dates. Did so you say think. Epic Vacation at Secrets Resort in Cancun? Next, no. Yeah, January. No, is that January? No, that might be another one. That's the one in March. January, next January, because we're, it's a new resort, and it's a Puerto Varta, and we've been there three times, and we like Puerto Varta. It's really nice, and, and the bottom line is, again, what real estate company is doing this? You know, it used to be, well, if you're in this region, you get to go, or if you're in this office, or this. We're, we're, just, we're just people. Agents are driving this company. Agents are driving it. It's so hard for me to explain to brokers because they think they drive it. <laughs> what can we expect uh, at the summit? Huh? What can we expect at the summit, the agenda? I don't think the oh, next, next year? This year. Oh, this year? June. June's going to be phenomenal. I mean, a lot of training. A lot of, a lot of, what we're going to do this year, by the way, I just heard from Dave Kenord. Remember we did it three years ago. We're going to have a video department there. So people can do their own testimonials, right? Bellingham. Yeah, like we did in Bellingham. Remember, we use those forever. And so we're going to do the same thing. We don't have enough canned, you know, you know, <coughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm excited. I, you know, as I was at Remax for 30 years, never thought of moving, and boom. Real short, really good things like that. And so you can say, well, I need one from Remax, or I need one from Cobalt Bank, or I need, you know what I mean. somebody from Remax 28 year she was at there for 28 years at the same brokerage yep said she'd never yeah. leave two weeks ago came over I've, I've heard this so many times if I had a nickel for every time somebody said I never thought I'd leave my company well look at me look at Elizabeth Elizabeth asked me to check it out oh, I wasn't looking I was at Keller Williams for 21 years I wasn't looking Right. In other words, you wanted me to tell you don't do it. Yes. Right? So she really did say, make sure you tell me this is goofy, and then we'll go find something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was not ready to uh, leave at all. 
You guys have heard my story.